Hey friends, and welcome back to Stronger Every Day. My name is Chrissy. I'm so glad to be back with you all. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about so some things that can help you when you struggle with mental illness. So these are very vague things because like I've said before, there's there's the mental health kind of title for for the the plethora of mental health illnesses but then there's depression anxiety ptsd schizophrenia bipolar there's um different variations of ptsd there's new things that that you guys have talked to me about that i'm even learning about that um there's uh they classify anorexia bulimia all of these things under the general term of mental illness and then it's kind of like cancer but then you've got breast cancer liver cancer thyroid cancer colon cancer you know, you know you have brain cancer all these different kind of subtitles under that so i have a video that i can link above kind of talking about what has has really helped me and i'll touch with with you on these that have helped me um through my journey if you don't know i've struggled with mental illness which for me is major depression disorder and anxiety for 28 and a half years and the past now 17 months have been the best 17 months that i can recall in my lifetime um have i still struggled yes there have been bad days but what it has been the difference is is that instead of something that 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 might happen like a situation that comes on that might typically send me into a spiral and into the depths of that depression and anxiety it doesn't make it all the way there um i'm not level like i was before that happened i come down some notches but it, i don't typically go all the way down now in that 17 months i've come close a couple of times but i've been able to really listen to what we talk about and 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 rebound back up so one of the first and foremost things that i talk about in every video is working on your relationship with god and for me what that's meant is not just saying yeah i'm a christian i, I love the lord it's diving deep right getting deep into god's word it's studying not just reading the bible it's taking time to really build that relationship it's like with your spouse or your friend or your family if you don't talk to them ever if you don't put an effort to see them or spend time with them or learn about them it's probably not going to be that tight and strong of a relationship as if you were talking with them and spending time with them daily um you know the more time you spend the more you're going to learn about somebody and so for me it's it's i've really made a conscious effort to stop with fitting god into my schedule and fitting but instead fitting my schedule around him and so what i typically do is is when i get up every morning i'll get my breakfast and I'll get my Bible, I'll get my notes, and I'll start studying. And sometimes I'll read a chapter, sometimes I'll read a verse, sometimes I'll read multiple chapters, and then I'll go and do some research on my own to help understand what I'm what I'm reading. We've talked about that. I have, um, for me, reading something doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to comprehend it. That's just how Chrissy is. That's my learning style. I'm not necessarily going to comprehend something just by reading it i need to kind of reread it study it dive into it sometimes it's it's getting in books and getting on the internet and getting on on um youtube and watching some videos about that verse sometimes it's praying about that verse so that god shows me um what he's wanting me to see in that verse sometimes it's a mixture of both but it's just taking that time and spending with him and friends i can tell you that's made a not in day change in me um when something happens now i react differently than i did 17 months ago um is it always perfect no <laughs> it's better than i would have reacted then i think if you ask anybody that knew me pre 17 months ago they would say something's changed about her um 
because they saw the imperfect me. They know the imperfect me. Um, I've told you and, and many times I, don't, I didn't go out and just tell everybody that I started this channel or the other channel for that matter. I didn't, I told obviously my husband. Um, I eventually told my dad. Um, my mom and dad, Nick's mom and dad know. And then one friend of mine knows. Um, Nick actually shared one of my videos to a social media platform. And so those folks know if they saw him share the video. Um, but it's not something I went out and, and told a lot of people because the way that I had been living pre 17 months ago was not the example that I want to be or that I'm striving to be, which is as Christ-like as I can be here on this earth. It was more about me. It was more selfish and just um, not a good example. And I feel like, so now I need to show you that I've changed, not just, not just run my mouth and talk and tell you I've changed. You need to see it. And so I'm not trying to prove anything to people, but I'm not trying to build myself up that I'm some something different than I am. I'm just Chrissy, but I've changed over this last 17 months um, to be able to handle things better mentally. So first and foremost is studying and spending more time with the Lord. The second thing is diet, your diet and hydration. And I know for me, hearing somebody talk about these things or reading about these things, most of the time I tuned out, zoned out, cut the video off, shut the book, and quit listening because you hear these things a decent amount when you when you try to figure out how to help yourself mentally to be able to to be more balanced in whatever balance looks like for for us for you and for me but these are crucial to actually listen to um i have a lot of people say well you know i've tried therapy and it didn't work and so i'm just giving up friends don't don't give up add keep adding to it right for me I did all of the above. I would go talk to a therapist, go talk to a psychiatrist, go talk to a psychologist, um, go talk to a counselor. But then after a few months, I quit doing that. And then six months later, I would try getting some exercise in. And then I would quit doing that. And then a year later, I would try eating better. And then I would quit doing that. Then I would try um, being more self-care and then I would quit doing that. What happened 17 months ago is I kind of hit it from all sides. Now for me, I have to kind of, change is hard for me. So I, yes, I hit it from all sides, but I did baby forms of that, right? So <clears throat> it's not just changing everything in your life all at once. It's changing one area getting pretty good in that area and then adding a little something else and then adding a little something else. Then I changed a little something else. And then just now have I started, now I'm physically active. We, we volunteer, volunteer for an agency in our community that demands physical activity. Um, but also we have a homestead. And so, um, you're constantly working on the homestead and we have goats, we have chickens, dogs, cats, um we had a garden we, we got we have things that have to get done so it's a, a physical activity of doing them but as far as getting my heartbeat going on a on a more aerobic level right so different things that i have done diet is is so important diet and hydration and so i feel better when I drink more water, and by more water, I mean plain water. When I add things to that water, now sometimes I kind of need to add something to it to get some more electrolytes in it, but whatever's in the, the added part tends to make me feel not as good. So I mean plain water for me, the other stuff might work great for you, but occasionally like I'll drink a liquid IV in my water, it's a, a, a powder supplement that you put in your water. Um, I wouldn't say that it tastes great. Um, there's different flavors, but I wouldn't say that it, and it says on the package, it's not meant for taste. But things like that is what I'm talking about adding. They're crystal light, you know, the, the different things people add to their water. 
um, and, and less caffeine. So it's been proven scientifically that caffeine can affect your body, it can affect your mental health, and so whether it's coffee or soda or whatever, however you're getting your caffeine, um, I've, I've tried to cut back on those and drink more water. On my diet, one of the biggest changes that I've made is steering clear of sugar. I am there for probably almost a year. I ate, if a recipe called for sugar, I put sugar in it. But as far as like cakes and candies and um, cupcakes, um, all of those type things, sweets, you know, pure sweet things, I didn't eat any. Um, and it's made a world of difference, not only in my mental health, it, it, there's, there's links there to inflammation and different things that it triggers, but not only in my mental health, but also in my arthritis is better. It's, I still have arthritis, but it's better. Um, I was actually came off a medicine that I was taking. It was a, just a prescription, basically, basically a prescription ibuprofen strength um, for arthritis. I was able to come off that, and now I just take like a Tylenol as needed, um, and it's helped my mental health. And it's not, it's it's been kind of interesting because I don't always see the change, but then Nick will say, you know, you handled that way different than you would have, you know, back before. You you really didn't get upset. There, there wasn't, you know, you even kind of, made me see it a different way um that's that's huge y'all and that's not chrissy that is god <laughs> um so this channel and it might be it might be by the time you see this video is approaching 500 subscribers that is not chrissy <laughs> that is not me that is God. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of YouTube. I don't know about the algorithm and how to use the great tag word or, or title or catchphrase or how to make the alg algorithm like you. I don't know any of that. Um, and the fact that there's one person that watches these videos <laughs> blows my mind. The fact that this video... This channel has almost 500, 500 subscribers. Blows my mind. And like I said, by the time you see this, it might be more, it might be less. It kind of ebbs and flows. But I, it's God. It's just, it's, it's um, the feeling that I feel right now today. I wish, number one, I could hold on to that feeling every day. And I wish I could give it to you all to hold on to that. It's a... It's a almost a peace, peace and joy, and that's hard to find when you struggle with mental illness. Another thing is exercise. We've talked about that. Exercise is a little bit different for everybody. Maybe for you, it's getting out in the garden. Listen, gardening is a task. It's a fun task for me. I enjoy going out there, but trying to keep the garden de-weeded, keep all the bugs out, keep, you know, um, the produce fresh, keep it watered, don't water it too much, you know, hope, you know, taking your hoe out there, taking your de weeder out there and trying to you know, get all the things, taking your, um, mulch and your, whatever you're putting down for weed barrier, or if you're just relying strictly, which is what we did, strictly on like hand, hand tilling up things, which is just picking them, picking weeds one by one. It's a lot of work. Maybe it's hiking for you. Um, maybe it's maybe your job. Maybe you're on your feet and, and active <clears throat> quite a bit. It's um, working out. It's getting on, getting outside for a hike, for a jog, for a run. Um, if you're a farmer, work in your land. It's, it's different for everybody. It's just getting your heart going, getting your body moving <clears throat> can make such a difference. I'm sorry about clearing my throat my voice is a little scratchy uh, my nose is either stopped up or runny it's it's allergy season here in Tennessee um, our temperature last week was I think we had a 92 degree day and then Saturday it was 38 <laughs> 
And so right now we're in the low 70s, I think, for a couple days. And then we have like a 77, 78 day, and then it drops back down to the 40s. So the temperature in Tennessee is officially fall, and that means it's going to fall wherever <laughs> it may. Um, I'm sure we'll have another little heat wave of high 70s, 80s before it officially turns cold. But yeah, so it's got my allergies kind of all out of whack. Anyway, um, sleeping. So when you're struggling with mental illness, you do you typically do one of two things: you don't sleep at all, or you sleep too much. Right? Me, it was it was both. Either I slept too much and mostly I just wanted to sleep to escape just to get away from the reality of, of day to day in the real life or I could not shut my mind off and it was just on repeat of things that happened that day, the day before and five years ago. <laughs> and so I would be up until, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning and then have to get up at six to go to work. And so, um... For me, it was either, but it's it's your it's your sleep and and you're told and every outlet you can go to says seven to nine hours of sleep. Um, I think that's crucial for us to get the right amount of sleep to help our bodies rest and recoup during the night. But I also understand that sometimes that's just not feasible. Um, there's a lot of people, and I've I've been one that um, your day was at work was 16 hours right that didn't include getting there and getting home and taking a shower and then preparing for the next day um so getting getting that sleep was not actually happening but if you're able it's taking taking your phone and shutting it off it's turning the television off, turning your radio off, turning your computer off, turning your laptop off, whatever device you're using at the end of the night and resting your brain, resting your body, getting away from all of the perfection that TV and social media kind of makes you think that others have and just shutting your mind down and resting and relaxing. Sleep is crucial. We all know that, but we struggle to actually put it forward. I told my husband the other day, he was talking about a, a diet that he was interested in. Now, Nick is not overweight. He's, I don't know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and he's, I don't know how much he weighs, but he, he um, the diet is mainly he's got a heart history in his his family. And we talked about that, and I said, listen, you're going to, whatever you think, you can say, you can research all the diets that you want. He was looking into like Mediterranean um, and the fork diet or something. Basically, you know, eat more fruits and vegetables, less meats. Um, fork, fork, no knife or I don't know, something like that. Anyway, I said, once you get to a point where you determine that it's worth your attention and it's worth the effort, then you'll make the change. But until you get there, you can research all this stuff all you want to, but until you get it in your heart and in your head that, look, I've had enough, I want to feel better, and so I'm going to go all in on this. I'm going to eat more fruits and vegetables and less meat or less red meat, or I'm going to go all in on eating only, you know, vet vegetables or, or whatever. I'm not recommending or, or saying any specific way you eat is right. It's something he's interested in. But until you decide that it's worth it and that you're all in, you can do any of it. You can talk about getting seven to nine hours of sleep. You can talk about changing your eating habits, adding in some physical activity. You can talk about changing your priorities. But until you decide that, number one, it's worth it, whatever, whatever you're looking at is worth it. Number two, that you're worth it. It's never going to change. It's never going to stick. You're going to stick with it for a moment and then you're going to stop. I think, looking at the time, I think we're going to turn this into a two-part series because I just don't have enough time. Well, we might. We might be able to make it. It might be a longer video. So, if you guys will sit tight, we'll try to get it all done in one video. The next one is, is cope with loss. For whatever reason, our society tells you that you have three days of, of grieving, right? You, most businesses give you three days. And then, like... 
set that under the rug, suck it up, buttercup, and get back to work, right? Get back to life, get back to whatever you're dealing with. And while I don't think we should wallow in sorrow, I don't think we should stuff it under the rug either. I think that's what's led to our society being the society it is today. We don't deal with trauma, we don't deal with grief, we don't deal with sadness, we don't deal with things that have happened to us. We are told to suck it up, act normal, shut your mouth, and move on and when you stuff things under the rug they're gonna come up right you're just kind of putting them in a pressure valve and then eventually they're gonna come up and you're going to go off and it's probably going to be on the wrong people the next thing is learning to relax <laughs> um still to this day when i was talking to i was talking to a counselor back the end of last year um probably like September through December-ish of last year. And he said, well, you know, what do you do for fun? What do you and your husband do for fun? And my face, I think, pretty much gave the answer away because it was something like this. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, like we work. Um, <clears throat> Nick works a full-time job. He typically works overtime at that full-time job. We both volunteer for an agency um, in our community. He also volunteers for a second agency or a second agency in the community and um, we have family, we have friends, we have responsibilities, we have a homestead, we have animals that have to be cared for on the daily. We have a senior, senior fur babies. I was actually, I had my calendar out. I was going through and adding for 2024 um, all the things that are, you know, the important birthdays and all that stuff in my new calendar. And I was looking, our youngest um, dog, we call them our kids, but for y'all to understand who I'm talking about, <clears throat> is our Great Dane, Stella. And she's going to be eight in January-ish. And that's that's pretty old for a dane you know seven to nine years is typically their lifespan now she is on the smaller side of a dane so hopefully we get to hold on to her a little bit longer but um the next age up is going to be 10 and then we've got a 15 our roddy will be in these are guesstimates we don't know most of their their dates of birth these are guesstimates our Roddy's going to be 15, and then we've got a um, Yorkie, I don't know where he is, somewhere, that's going to be 15, and then we have a little Chihuahua that we adopted two years ago that's going to be 13. So we're, we have the elderly side, and they come with elderly problems, but it's finding time in your day. Like if you have two-legged kids, then <clears throat> you know, or even if you don't have kids, you understand life is still stressful regardless of, of what all responsibilities you have and it's finding just that little time to relax and I don't mean if you can this is great I don't mean you know sitting in the bath for two hours and reading a book with a candle lit and just zoned out and relaxing if you can do that y'all have at it like I'm super enthused for for y'all I probably could do that I'm just not a huge bath person but um if it's going to get a massage, if it is going to the spa for the day, do it. Do, you know, give give your body a little love, a little attention. Not We obviously know as Christians that we don't take this over the limit, right? But for me, what that looks like is I, Nick will typically at some point within a year or two, I'll get a massage. Um, it's usually for an hour and that I love it right um, for me on the daily and I've talked about this before my relaxation it's getting up it's a little self-care it's it's a baby self-care and anybody can do it no matter how much time you have or don't have I get up I take a cool rag and put it on my face and just kind of uh, kind of wake myself up I brush my teeth I put on some chapstick and then I put on some moisturizer. And guys, you can do that too. You have your your face can get dry, your lips can get dry. It's not it's not womanly to you know. I'm talking to my brothers and my sisters out there, right? And then I will fix my hair, which is this, you know, if you can see, it's not really fixed, but it's fixed for me. Um, coincidentally, I'll pop a picture of our chickens up here. This is why we got 
the Polish chickens because our hair matches. That's homesteading right there, folks. When, you're, when your hairdo matches your livestock, that's homesteading. <laughs> anyway, so taking just a little bit, of, little bit of time to relax. Maybe it's reading a book in the evening. Maybe it's lighting a candle and just enjoying the scent that it gives off. Maybe it's just kind of watching um, off your back porch, just at your surroundings or your front porch. Maybe it is whatever that looks like for you, friends. It's different for literally every single person. Not all of us have the same amount of time. Not all of us have the same responsibilities and the same things that require our attention. So it's gonna be different for all of us, but find that little bit of time to just relax. Whatever that is that helps you relax, take that time to help you just kind of, just for a second, right? I know it's extremely hard for my husband to do this um, with everything he's got going on right now. We just had this conversation today that you cannot be all for all about all for everybody. You can't like people are going to have to rely on themselves. Some, you know, you can't, you can't take everybody's responsibilities on yourself and then still function. Right. And so <clears throat> we struggle to find things that we enjoy. Now, do we have, a, we have fun. Do we have a good time? Yes. You know, we do things, but as far as like something that make that we enjoy, I, I just, I don't know. We used to golf occasionally and by golf, I mean, I drove the golf cart and he golfed. I don't, I'm not a big golfer, but we, we haven't done that in years. It's, I don't know, five years, maybe, maybe longer. Um, we don't really go anywhere. We don't really do vacations. We've talked about that in a, in a previously. Um, so it's, I don't know, like, what, what do y'all do? I've asked this question a lot and I rarely get an answer. What do y'all do for fun? Like, what do you do? What, not what you want to do or what you think you should do, but what do you actually do for fun? The next one is talking. Um, talk to someone, whether it's a friend, a family member, whether it's the 988, you can text or, or call um, star 988, and that's the suicide hotline. Um, whether it's talking to a therapist, talking to a coworker, whoever, you're, you're more than welcome to talk to me. I have cautioned on this though. Number one, I'm not a, I'm not a certified therapist. I'm just somebody that's dealt with major depression disorder and anxiety for 28 years and I don't always see the comments right away sometimes I do and I can reply pretty quick but if it's a life and death situation I'm probably not going to be your go-to but if you need to talk I'm more than happy to talk with you and pray with you um you can message me on Instagram is probably the more private way obviously any any um internet based anything can be hacked so it's not you know whatever but if you need someone to talk to i'm always there to talk and listen and pray um, i might not have the the perfect example of advice that you're looking for but i'm always in your corner um, i hope that you guys are in mine and we can just help this community through what we're going through the other one is is actually reach out and help others so when you're struggling with mental illness and it's not that you're you're trying to be selfish it's that you are trying to survive right but in order to survive your focus is on is on you because a lot of the time it's trying to talk yourself out of self-harm a lot of the time it's trying to talk yourself out of your safe space which for me is our bedroom um, a lot of the time, it's trying to talk yourself out of the four walls of your home. Um, try, whether it's volunteering, <clears throat> you know, even if, if you don't want to make a commitment of it, <clears throat> swing by your local animal shelter. Swing by your local rescue shelter and see if there's anything you can do that day. You don't have to make a, I'm going to be here every Saturday. Uh, that's hard for me. I, I'm not going to lie. It's hard for me to say, <clears throat> to make a commitment that I'm going to do something every Wednesday at one o'clock. It's hard for me to make that commitment. It, it messes with me a little bit. 
and then I start thinking about that commitment when I leave it. So if I, if I work Wednesday at one o'clock, say one to three, I'm already thinking about the next Wednesday and it's on repeat in my mind of all the possible things that can happen, which is when I have to keep stopping and resetting my mind and focusing it back on the Lord. So, but whatever, whatever works for you, if you can get, if you can make your mind focus on someone else or something else that's happening, like I've said before, it's not a selfish thing. You're trying to survive. You're trying to make it through mental illness, but it is taking a little bit of that and focusing it on someone else. And even if that is not leaving your home, but reaching out to someone that you know kind of struggles like you do and just say, hey, I just thought I'd check in on you today, thinking about you. Something simple like that. Um, take it at your pace. Do what you can do. But it's just helping others. Whatever that may look like. If you live next door to someone who's elderly. And you know they're struggling with, with weed eating. Or mowing their grass. Or getting their trash to and from the curb. Just you don't have to make a habit of it. If you want to make a habit of it do. But just run over and mow the grass real quick. Or bring their trash can back down for them. You don't have to knock on the door. And tell them you're doing it. Unless they're like you know. Some, some people where I live probably would not do anything if they saw you mowing their yard but if you were messing with something they might you know <laughs> might be an issue but just little acts of kindness can help help you refocus your mind the next thing is social connections so what do we do when we're struggling with mental illness we withdraw right and so the only voice we're hearing is the devil who's inside our head telling us all the crap that he wants us to think about ourselves and all the reasons why we're worthless and not worthy and just shouldn't even be here on this earth anymore when you withdraw that's the only voice you're hearing right and if you can ever stop yourself and realize that that's just crap coming from the devil then maybe you can stop that spiral and start putting good thoughts in your head friend that that's been the hardest thing for me is stopping all the crap as soon as the devil puts it in my head and start refilling it with truth right you're a child of god god loves you you're needed you're wanted even if every single person on this earth thinks you're the worst scum of the earth, God loves you, right? It's refocusing my mind. And sometimes I've told y'all, it gets to the, it's so bad, the thoughts are so bad, that I just have to sit and repeat Jesus over and over and over until I finally either fall asleep or my mind changes. It's not a one and done for me. It's a battle in my mind every single day to change my thoughts. The next one is so be kind to yourself. And I think, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I struggle with that. I'm going to go into this more in, in another video, but I, I, the way I was raised um, by, my, by my mom in particular was um, it's where I get my you're not worthy from. And um, I struggle all the time with being good to myself. I don't typically treat myself to things. I don't typically buy myself things. Um, I don't feel worthy of really anything. And like I said, we'll touch on that in probably the next video. I've been talking to y'all about kind of telling my story and my history and my background. And I feel like I've been released to tell it. I feel like um, it's very important to me um, to be respectful of it and not... Um, do it in a mean-spirited or unkind way so I feel like I'm released to do that and that will probably be the next video but be kind to yourself even if that's like the little bit of self-care that I talked about like just putting putting some chapstick on brushing your teeth doing things that most people would think that's not self-care for me it is for 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 Chrissy it is right it's it's self-care when I get up every day brush my teeth put you know do my little my little routine it's it's being a little bit kind to yourself um and it doesn't have to involve money right maybe you maybe you just sit and you you say you know you're a child of god god loves you um god died for you he he he's looking up there thinking that's my girl that's my that's my boy you know that that's my kid down there I, I, i'll just love them maybe it's talking to yourself in a better way just little bits of self-care that level there's there's a, a wide range of what we view as self-care and, and treating ourselves correctly and um 
you know, I could sit here and go on with examples all the time or all day long, but it's just what, what does a little bit of self-care for you mean? What does that mean to you? Um, and sometimes you have to actually say, what does that mean to me? What, what is self-care? Like I, I'm a little lost on this, you know, I'm not, not familiar with it. I don't typically do it. So the next one is, is kind of in line with the coping with things. It's deal with situations. Um, so often we, we say, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'll deal with it later. I don't want to deal with this right now. Go ahead and handle it then. Because for me in my mind, when I try to put something off, that just gives my mind more time to focus on that and think of the 737 different ways that that outcome can happen. And if you have depress if you have mental illness and, you and in particular your mind works like mine, you know what I'm talking about. Like you already have that situation. There's not a possible outcome that can happen because you've already figured out every possible outcome. And then it's on repeat in your mind. And then you're having anxiety. Then you're having um, your your heart's getting up. Your your anxiety's getting up. You're getting nervous. You're starting to pull in, and then you're you're pushing off things further and further. I try, if at all possible, to deal with whatever situation is coming at that time. Now, there's some things you need to recognize that you don't need to deal with. They're not worth your time, right? Everybody's drama and everybody's problem is not necessarily something that you need to be involved in. There's things that happen. There's family members that I watch. And in my, my opinion, I think, man, you're kind of getting taken advantage of there. That's between them and, and whoever, whatever's going on, right? It's not affecting my life. And so basically I tell myself, you know, mind your own business, Chrissy. You know, who are you to say how they should react to a situation? You're not in that situation. Some things we need to understand, you just need to step away from. It doesn't have anything to do with you. You're, you know, you're trying to inject yourself or you see this injustice and it kind of, it, it, the spiral on us ticks you off. And so you want to kind of step in and make things better. If God's released you to do that, then 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 do it. But he's not going to have you go at someone in a hateful, mean, yelling, angry way. He's going to have you come at someone in loving, with loving, understanding, and treat them the way you want to be treated, ready to forgive. Right? Um, uh, there's things that happen that I think... I can feel God just grabbing my shirt saying, I, mm -mm, I have this. I don't need your help. I'll let you know if I need your help because sometimes God sends in the troops, right? But a lot of the time, he doesn't. A lot of the time, it's just our pride saying, well, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to take care of this. This is something I don't like. But you're not understanding the whole situation or seeing both sides of the story or knowing that that person's allowing themselves to be taken advantage of. It's just stepping back and saying, I'm going to be there for them if they need me. But that's, that's their will to decide what they want to do with it. The last two, so it would be find a hobby. Um, and that is not something I've done. Um, well, let me take that back. So gardening obviously is, is a hobby. It's something that we're doing to try to try to have better, try to know where our food's coming from, be a little bit more sustainable. So it is a hobby, but it's also work. Um, but you know, find a hobby that you enjoy. Now, I do enjoy the gardening. Now, I'll tell you what I love. There's something about opening our back door and seeing our chickens and goats just enjoying life out there. It's just peaceful for me. Now, you guys might be thinking, I don't want to have anything to do with chickens and goats. Like I've said, it's, it's different for each person. But for me, something about walking out and seeing all my chickens, they come running, you know, the goats come running up, and it's just... There's just a peace out there. I just, I really, really have enjoyed um, getting chickens. We've had goats. Rue, our big, big, he's a big, 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 um, solid black. He has like one little patch of white or two little patches of white. He's a, he's going to be five in, he's four and a half. He's going to be five in April. Um, boar mix goat. He's huge. He's like a hundred plus pounds. Um, We've had him for five, we got him right after he got weaned. And we had him and another one, Eeyore, and then Eeyore passed away um, three years ago next year. So two years, this April, it was two years. And then we got Java, 
So we've had her, Rue went through some definite sorrow. He laid over where we buried Eeyore um, for a while. And so we got Java and then we just recently added Maggie, uh, I'll put a picture of them, Maggie, Mocha, and Blackie to our herd in May of this year. So it's just something about seeing them and all the goats, all the chickens. We have 32 chickens. <laughs> um, it's just peaceful. And then also, so, so the hobby, and then also if it helps you have a journal, um, there's something about a written journal that you can just write down. You don't have to get super personal. You can hide it if you feel like, you know, you don't want your, your thoughts necessarily written down for somebody else to see. Um, you can hide your journal, lock your journal, buy a little, you know, a little safe and put it in there. There's something therapeutic about just writing down what you're experiencing and then also to kind of read back. That's one reason why I have a calendar. I have a a calendar that um, I have day-to-day -day things from and it's always interesting when I go to fill out the next year's calendar. I'll reference back that calendar calendar to make sure I get everything in there. And it's always interesting to reference back, oh yeah, you know, we, we, went, we did this or we had this or this happened or whatever. Um, and see how far you've grown and journaling can really help you with that. Not only does it help, help you to get it out of your brain, so at least it's written down on paper, even if you don't want to talk to someone about it, but then to be able to go back um, and say, wow, I was in a really bad spot you know, that, that week or those weeks. And I've really come out of that and things have kind of changed around. And I've told y'all the devil had in my mind and I've not said it in a long time, but he had in my mind that this is never going to get better. It's always going to be bad. You're always going to struggle with mental health and My little helper here wants to be up in my lap. You're always going to struggle with mental health. It's every time it comes back, it's going to be worse. It's going to be longer and it's going to be harder. And um, he had that in my mind, engraved in my mind that, you know, you're going to struggle with this your entire life. And I may, I've said before, God can heal me. I fully, I 1000% fully believe that God is going to heal me. He can heal you. Is it going to be on this side of heaven? I don't know the answer to that, but I fully believe that he can heal us. Um, and finally, you know, the friend that, that I, that kind of gave me confirmation that, that God was calling me to do this channel, whether she knew she did or not, um, was saying, don't say things like that. Don't speak that out because you're, you're hearing that you're processing it in your mind, then you're speaking it out. And so it's becoming even more true. You know, we, th we see all these things about us and we put them on repeat and then they tend to become who we are. Um, and just, you know, we take other people's opinion of us and we allow it to mold the person that we are. Um, whether they're friends of yours or not friends of yours, whether they're family or not family, their opinion of how you are is not you. Your relationship is just between you and God, and that's what you need to focus on. Um, I have some people that I don't know that they really enjoy being around me anymore. Um, I guess I'm, I'm considered not as fun as I used to be, um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I still love them. I think that they still love me. It's just that, you know, there's a little bit of a gut check there that maybe they think that I'm, that I wouldn't be okay in whatever situation they're in and they're probably right um but i've lost some friends over this past 18 months i've lost friends all my entire life um you have to understand and i've heard this said and i've said it before sometimes you're here for friends are here for a season right? friends i end every video this way it is my hope and my heart that you feel this and understand it i've said before which goes against anything YouTube related. If you just need to skip to the end of the video to hear this, skip to the end of the video. God loves you. I love you. Your family loves you. Your friends love you. And we need you here. We'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.